Mr. KKR's decimation of Delhi Capitals yesterday. For the second game in IPL 2024, we saw a team overall 263-272, just five day, five runs away from the world record score that SRH had done against MR. Are we going to see some huge totals in IPL 2024 that will redefine the history books? That remains to be seen now. But firstly, before I come to the KKR versus DC game, two encounter, two important bits of news that I'll be sharing with you. Mayank Yadav for Team India in the T20 World Cup, that seems to be the latest buzzword when you have to look at it. Because Mayank Yadav in the two games that he's played for Lucknow Super Giants, 8 overs, 41 runs, 6 wickets, 17 deliveries in excess of 150, accurate, hit the deck, pace close to 96-97 miles per hour and that is the main reason why many selectors, many former selectors are stating that yes, Mayank Yadav should be fast-tracked into the Indian cricket team for the T20 World Cup. A lot of people are saying yes, Please fast track this player because of his accuracy, because of the way how he bowls. Fast track him into the Indian team for the T20 World Cup. Six days after the IPL ends, the T20 World Cup begins. Mayank Yadav, with his pace, he's currently the hottest topic in Indian cricket. Will he make it to the Indian cricket team? The calls to fast track him, are they legitimate? That remains to be seen. So. Lot of buzzwords around Mayank Yadav's inclusion in the Indian cricket team for the T20 World Cup. Remember, the squad is getting picked by April end or by May 1st. That is when the selectors will uh, sit and then pick the squad for the T20 World Cup. When the squad is picked for the T20 World Cup, you can make changes until May 28th. After that, you will have to rely on the ICC Technical Committee for ensuring that he is uh, that he is included. So. That is the latest buzzword about it. Mayank Yadav for the T20 World Cup. What do fans think? Many of the fans think that yes, fast track him. But we have seen cautionary tales in the past regarding Umran Malik. There's also been all the other former pace bowlers who have not been treated well by the Indian cricket team. Because role clarity was not there. Will he bowl in the power play? Will he bowl in the middle overs? Will he bowl in the death overs? That remains to be seen. So, Mayank Yadav is becoming a serious contender for the T20 World Cup if former players are to be believed. Apparently, in a report by the Times of India, some selectors are already impressed by Mayank Yadav. And that is why a lot of eyes, a lot of focus will be on them in the upcoming games for the Lucknow Super Giants because his action and his pace will be monitored very, very closely. But one also has to understand that he's injury prone as well. So that is the current situation regarding Mayank Yadav. Mayank Yadav for the T20 World Cup. That is the trend many people are giving on social media after two matches. And valid also because 8 overs, 6 for 41, 17 deliveries in excess of 150 clicks. He's already bowled a 157 kmph Thunderbolt. Previous game, he bowled a 156 kmph Thunderbolt. So, he is somewhere down the line going to break the record for the fastest delivery in the history of the IPL. That is currently being held by Sean Tate. So, will he break that in the coming games? That also remains to be seen. Now, there is another developing story about Prithvi Shaw. Prithvi Shaw, remember, in the two games that he's played for the Delhi Capitals, he's shown promise, he's shown very good form. But now, it all relates back to an incident that happened about eight, nine months ago. You all will remember that he was involved in an incident with a social media influencer where he was accused of beating her up and all that things. Well, the social media influencer is actually out on bail. But now the Mumbai court, a Mumbai court has directed the police to uh, investigate the charges of molestation. Now, that is a very serious offense. Mumbai court has directed the police to investigate molestation charges that the social media influencer has leveled on Prithvi Shaw. Whether troubles will mount for him, they have directed him to file an FIR in this entire incident. How this will distract Prithvi Shaw, that remains to be seen now. So, this is a rather developing story and troubles are mounting for Prithvi Shaw at this point in time. Let's see how that happens in this particular situation. We wish that the investigation is concluded quickly. 
and also let us hope that Prithvi Shaw gets back to doing what he does best, play cricket and also play it very well. But now, Rishabh Pant is staring at a ban at this point in time. After Delhi Capitals were absolutely hammered by Kolkata Knight Riders 106, Unbelievably, for the first time in their history, Kolkata Knight Riders have won the first three games on the trot in IPL. In IPL, So that is a big, big development that is there. It was a flat deck. Delhi Capitals were already two overs behind for the second straight game. And now, Rishabh Pant and the Delhi Capitals have gotten a big fine now. Now, if Rishabh Pant gets fined yet again, if DC are fined for the third game against Mumbai Indians, then Rishabh Pant will get a one-match ban. He's already been fined about 24 lakhs in the first offence, for second offence, 12 lakhs was the first offence, 24 lakhs was the second offence, and now third offence means he could be banned for one game. So Rishabh Pant is staring at a ban of one match if Delhi Capitals have an overrate offence against the Mumbai Indians in the next game. But the problem here is that Rishabh Pant and Ricky Ponting were absolutely furious with the way how Delhi Capitals played. I mean, Ricky Ponting said, embarrassing, unacceptable. These are the two terms that he used consistently in the post-match press conference for the Delhi Capitals. On the other hand, he praised Angriksh Raghuvanshi for the way how he played. He said, the knock that was played by the uh, number three batter for Kolkata Knight Riders, Angriksh Raghuvanshi, that kind of surprised them and took the game away from the Delhi Capitals. Rishabh Pant, on the other hand, absolutely lambasted the bowler, saying that we were just all over the place and there was just no coming back from that. Delhi Capitals, after winning against the Punjab Kings at Mullapur, now they have faced a big crisis. And they have also won their game against the De Chennai Super Kings. All the momentum that was built in the Chennai Super Kings win has now evaporated with this massive loss against the Kolkata Knight Riders. They are now currently, uh, you may say, ninth in the points table because their net run rate has taken an absolute bashing at this point. Kolkata Knight Riders, on the other hand, have a plus 2.5 net run rate. And this will put them in a good state heading into the playoff stages because in the past, Kolkata Knight Riders have always faced issues by getting uh, bumped out because of a poor net run rate. So, Kolkata Knight Riders are on a high three consecutive games, one for the first time in IPL history. And that is why it's a big, big thing indeed. So, congratulations to the Kolkata Knight Riders. And also, it's bad news for Delhi Capitals if Rishabh Pan gets banned for one game. Now, there is criticism coming in for Virat Kohli. The Ambati Raidu on Star Sports, if you look at it, that has been a big, big problem for him. Ambati Raidu, speaking to uh, Star Sports, has said Virat Kohli needs to be blamed for all the woes that is happening in Royal Challengers Bangalore at this point in time. He said when he was the captain, he was there in the auction process, he was in charge of most of the decisions. Where was a team built for RCB? Why didn't he go for the best bowlers? And if they went for bowlers, why did they pick them for the same role that was there? There is tremendous criticism for uh, Virat Kohli at this point in time from Ambati Raidu. Ambati Raidu has also said that if Virat Kohli, he scored over 7,000 runs for the franchisee, who is the next best to have played for the franchisee? Rahul Dravid, with only 800 runs. A team cannot win on the basis of just one individual alone. That is Ambati Raidu's criticism of Virat Kohli. He said that if he is only the person upon which the entire team's fortune is dependent upon, they cannot win an IPL title. That is the way how Ambati Raidu has stated at this point in time. So, it's not good news at all for Royal Challengers Bangalore. And their woes have continued four games, three losses. With the one win that came against the Punjab Kings, it's not a good start at all for them. Having lost heavily to Chennai Super Kings, to uh, Lucknow Super Giants and also to Kolkata Knight Riders. It's not a good start for RCB at all. And you've seen, once they have a bad start, it continues to prolong it in that sense. Delhi Capitals also the same thing. Lost to Punjab Kings, but bounced back in the game versus Chennai Super Kings, but lost very heavily to the Kolkata Knight Riders. And that is why... Big, big problems for them. They have also lost to the Rajasthan Royals as well. So, 
it's not a good beginning for the Delhi Capitals and the Rishabh Pant's captaincy. So, big problems for these two franchisees and also for the Mumbai Indians. No wonder they are in the bottom three of the IPL at this point in time. So, that is the current situation that is there where it comes to the IPL. Now, as far as other sports is concerned, today, the Candidates Chess Tournament is about to begin. And we've got five Indians who are in the fray for that World Championship spot. Vidit Gujarati, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, then you've got D. Gukesh, Veshali Ramesh Babu and Koneru Hampi. These five are going to bid for the World Championship spot, not just in the men but also in the women's section. It's happening in Toronto, Canada and all the games will begin from 12 a.m. IST onwards. Because the time difference between Canada and India is so huge, 12 a.m. IST, that is when you're going to see all the chess action happen. Today, Vidit Gujarati takes on D. Gukesh. Ramesh Babu Pragnananda takes on Ali Reza Firoja. Now, that is going to be a real, real problem. I've done some videos on the candidates chess. You can check that out on Sports Radio that we have done the build-up to the candidates. There was visa issues. There was also a format thing by which Magnus Carlsen decided to withdraw from it. So, that's why the candidates chess tournament is beginning. Ramesh Babu Pragnananda taking on Ali Reza Firoja and D. Gukesh taking on Vidit Gujarati. So, 12 a.m. IST, the matches are going to begin. We at Sports Radio will be covering that extensively. So, do check that out for all the latest news and analysis. There is also problems in the world of other sports. We look at the Commonwealth Games. Singapore has flatly denied that they will never, that they are not going to host the Commonwealth Games. Victoria, remember, backed out of it and now... What is the future of the Commonwealth Games that we do not know at this point? So, big problems for the Commonwealth Games. Is there a future for the Commonwealth Games that we do not know at this point? So, this is the developments that we are seeing at this point. And also, a very strange case where billiards, a billiards player has been caught doping. Now, that is the latest thing that has surprised you all. I'll be doing a special reel on that. Do check that out as well. So, I'll take a couple of questions that is happening at this point. MTT Creations is saying, we have seen two big high scores in this IPL. Is it something to do with the pitch or because of the bad bowling by the opposite team? It is a combination of both MTT. I mean, it was a flat, flat deck. And also, look at the boundaries in Vizag. They are so small, just like the Chinnaswami. Bad bowling combined with a very flat pitch ensures that it is going to be a big, big problem for them. So, huge worries around Mumbai Indians and Delhi Capitals because their bowling has been taken to the sword. In Hyderabad, you saw it was a flat deck, 277 and sustained hitting. I mean, you saw Agarik Shraguvan, you saw Sunil Narayan, you saw Andre Russell, sustained power hitting. So, bowlers will fall flat accordingly in that sense. Sijoy Alapat is saying, bad bowling and flattest of pitches won't see such scores in the World Cup. Agreed, maybe you will not see those kind of scores in the World Cup. Vini Tambat is saying, it's a dilemma. Fast-tracking Mayank Yadav should backfire, but since many don't know his bowling well, he can be effective in the upcoming World Cup. Vini Tambat, I don't think it's a dilemma anymore. When Mayank Yadav has come out in the IPL, you are going to see every team scrutinize his bowling to the hilt. And this is where he will have to adapt to it. He will have to rely on one old school method, accuracy. Now, Munaf Patel, Umran Malik in the past started out as tearaway quicks. In the case of Munaf Patel, injuries ensured and that is why he had to cut down on pace to such an extent that he was bowling in the late 120s. On the other hand, Umran Malik was not handled well because of no role clarity. Umran Malik predominantly was in the middle overs and not so much in the death. He was bowling in the death overs as well as in the power play in the uh, Indian team setup. So that's why he lost confidence at this point. Varun Aran also the same thing. Pace was there, but he was never accurate. Can Mayank Yadav be all the three? Injury free, accurate and also proper role clarity. These are the three things that Mayank Yadav needs in order to ensure that he makes a sustained run in the Indian cricket team. But as far as the novelty factor is there, forget it. Because every team now will scrutinize Mayank Yadav in a big, big way. 
Now, Mayank should be in the T20 World Cup. See, Joe Allah say. Moses was around 150, while Umran hardly bowled above 150. See, he did bowl over 150. But yes, not with that sustained consistency that was there. He was bowling about 145, 147. Agreed. But a T20 World Cup pressure is a whole lot different than IPL pressure. Sure, he is calm, he is showing maturity. But we all know how quickly that can change, see Joy. So, I thought PK won against DC. Yes, PPK has won against DC. Maybe there was a slip of tongue. So, pardon me if I had done that, we need. So, that's the thing that I did correct it later on. Mayang Madan Singh, Angrik Raghuvanshi is a friend of my batchmate. So good to see him start, starting on a high note. Oh, well done, Mayang Madan. Well done. I mean, Angrik Raghuvanshi from Mumbai is a uh, individual to look forward to. I mean, he does bowl slow left arm and the hitting that he did yesterday. Man, oh man, KKR have another the gym at this point. Uh, Srivatsa Vinjamuru, VK dropped Ambati Red, so maybe that's why the criticism VK and RS need some wins to boost their confidence. I mean, you can say as well that, yep, that is the problem. But uh, it's a criticism and he's not wrong in that sense. Shreyansh Pudipati saying, said, I'm asking generally, do India really require Rinku over Jaiswal as we also do well in the last 10 hours? My main problem is the power play. So we need Jaiswal over Rinku more. But Shreyansh, Unfortunately, in the first three games for Rajasthan Royals, Jaiswal has not been in good form. Now, if Jaiswal's form slips, but you will need a Rinku as a finisher. Because sometimes when you look at intent, last 10 overs, you have been caught napping. And that is why it is a big, big issue that is there. You need a Rinku for that finisher's touch. But with Virat and Rohit going to play in the 11, they will be starting in the 11. It is a case of Yashasvi Jaiswal or Rinku. It is not Yashasvi Jaiswal and Rinku. But the management might be tempted to drop a Yashasvi Jaiswal just to get the firepower in Rinku Singh lower down the order. Maybe they believe Rohit will give you that firepower. Surya Kumar Yadav can give you that firepower. But you will need Yashasvi and Rinku, it's not the case anymore, it's a Yashasvi or a Rinku. So, it is a genuine thing. Yes, I know, last 10 overs over the years, it's been a mixed bag. I mean, you look at it in the semi-final of the T20 World Cup of 2022. First 10 overs, 62. Last 10 overs, 106. You do have the firepower, agreed. But then Rinku, you will have to go with him. He's your MVP at this point. Ankur Naik, Mayank has not only got pace, but his accuracy is also impeccable. Just two games, Ankur. Take it very cautiously. See him after one season. You've seen the effects of fast tracking. And remember, he's also injury prone. So that's why you have to look at it in the, with a pinch of salt every single time when you look at pace bowlers in India. If Mayank Yadav takes more than 20, the knowledge universe is saying, well, then he has ensured that he has made the right kind of noises. So that's the thing. Sara Mayesh is saying, what's the highlights of 2022 semi-final against England if you want 135 kmph bowlers? You will not have that at this point. See, Bumrah is there, Siraj is there, and basically Arshdeep is there. All can clock about 140. So you won't have 135. When can we expect regular content on football also? Shout out to sports. You are getting, you will get regular content on football also, my friend. But the thing is, you all will have to uh, do it. The viewers, the fans will have to exercise their rights and give us views. Because when we do other sports stories, see the views fair and see the views for cricket. That is unfortunately the mentality that is there at this point in time. I have done so many stories of other sports. But do we get views on that, Mayank? Check that out. So that's why big, big concern. You have to shout out also. But the fans also will have to respond, isn't it? So... Ankur Nag, any chance of Rishabh being picked for the T20 World Cup? He's making the right noises. Let's see how that happens. Surya and Sharma, we can have Rinku and Jaiswal both. Hardik as the fifth bowler. Very difficult. Hardik for his fitness. Do you want four overs from him? Is the Indian cricket team really banking on Hardik, the fifth bowler? And let us not forget that all this, what is happening in the IPL, is his confidence going to be good? That is the major question at this point in time. So, that is the latest we have today. It is Gujarat Titans versus the Punjab Kings. Let's see if Gujarat can maintain their momentum. Will Punjab Kings bounce back? That remains to be seen. So, today it is Gujarat Titans versus Punjab Kings. Tomorrow it is 
Chennai Super Kings versus the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us for this live. We'll be back with more updates on sports rate. Tap the bell icon so that we go live. And don't forget, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Bye bye.